unique part of uh, the work that we're going to embark upon is the study of lysosomes in aged muscle. There's virtually nothing known about lysosomes in aged muscle, whether it's a, an animal model or human. Uh, understanding aging muscle is easy for most people if they look uh, at their relatives, older relatives, uh, even the parents or their grandparents, uh, and, and look at what's happening to their muscles over the course of time. So you, what you see with age is uh, muscle wasting, you see uh, weakness, you see frailty. We're trying to understand what goes into, what are the molecular mechanisms involved in that muscle wasting phenomenon and the deterioration of strength and endurance that takes place with age. Now what we know is that in, uh, with age, uh, mitochondrial dysfunction increases and it's compounded by the fact that we're mostly an inactive society. We don't stay active. And the combination of inactivity and aging leads to poor quality mitochondria inside muscle cells. Mitochondria are the energy producers. So poor quality mitochondria means less energy. It also means the production of molecules called reactive oxygen species, or free radicals. Free radicals are damaging molecules that affect DNA, protein, lipids in cells, and when they build up, they cause further deterioration. It leads to poor strength, poor endurance, poor quality of life. So, our goal is to understand why mitochondria exhibit this poor function with age. We have evidence to show that lysosomes in aged muscle do not degrade the bad quality mitochondria like they should. Uh, and so the goal is to look at human uh, experimental models uh, and also to look between sexes because it, what's fascinating to us is the fact that lysosome quantity seems to differ between males and females. Uh, and so that's something that's never been discovered before and we're going to pursue that at the uh, animal level and also the, uh, in whole humans of course.